And welcome back, everyone. I'm Jessica Robinson here on Star News with breaking news. Mary Martin, a Henry County native, announces her intention to run for the 14th seat as an independent against Danny Marshall and Dr. Gary Miller. Star News was there. Good afternoon. I'd like to thank all of you that have come out today from the media and some of my supporters and friends here. I'm sure everybody's wondering why I chose to be way off down here in the countryside to make this announcement today, but let me share with you that this is home. I was born and raised on a tobacco farm about a mile from this building, and everybody in every one of these houses on this road I grew up with. So I felt like I needed to come home to announce to the people that I grew up with and have known all my life that I would really like to be their representative in the 14th District of the House of Delegates this year. So I am formally announcing that I will be an independent candidate for the 14th District House of Delegates seat. This will not be a long speech, doesn't need to be. I'm a very conservative, independent person. Note, I did not say independent politician. I have testified at least eight times before the SCC against AEP rate increases, both in Richmond and in Franklin County. I have led the charge to help the folks, the seniors and the single families and people on fixed incomes and businesses with their electricity rates, which has risen dramatically since 2007 when new laws were passed in Richmond that allowed this to happen. And I have not had much success at just going on my own, so I'm praying that if I can sit down there with these folks, I can bring both sides of the aisle together and we can take some proactive action to actually help the citizens of Henry County, Pennsylvania County, and the city of Danville with utility bills. I want to give people a choice between candidates that believe higher taxes are the answer to every problem. Higher taxes only add to the problem. The largest tax increase in the history of Virginia was passed this year, and one of my opponents supported that. And there is not one thing in that tax increase that will benefit Southside Virginia. Not one. I believe the protection of Virginians' property rights are one of the most important functions of an elected representative. We too often have the government trying to take your land for various reasons or they want to have the right of way through it and you don't realize when you're giving them the right of way you're actually giving them your land. We have to protect our property rights. It's one of the few rights we have left. I believe we must improve our children's education, and this starts with supporting Virginia teachers. I am most distraught with some of the legislation that passed this past General Assembly against Virginia teachers. It was not proactive Virginia teachers. It did not do anything to encourage teachers to come to Virginia. It did nothing to encourage teachers to stay in Virginia. I find it ironic that it was labeled the Education Fairness Act because it was anything but fair to Virginia teachers. I hope I can make some changes to that. I believe we must change laws that benefit utility companies. That's the law I was speaking of earlier in 2007. If, a ut if any business has a monopoly, they don't need to be given a blank check to do whatever they want to do to the consumers. And this is a big pet peeve of mine. I believe that we have got to enforce the conflict of interest rules in the General Assembly. I know they have them. They just don't abide by them. For example, if the chairman of the Commission on Electric Utilities Regulations, if he owns over a quarter million dollars worth of stock in electric utilities, not only should he not be the chairman of this commission, he should not have a vote in this at all. And I see this with a lot of the people I look up on VPAP.org where you can look and see any of your representatives' financial disclosures. If you own massive amounts of stock in a company, you should have no vote on that. Even local boards have conflict of interest rules that they abide by. And it appalls me that there seems to be no attention to these in Richmond. 
that will be one of the first things I will address. Will it be popular? No, it will not. Will it be the right thing to do? Yes, it will. And the big question in some of the areas here is on uranium mining. I do not support uranium mining in Virginia. Let me get on the record with that and get that over with early in the campaign. These are some things I pledge to do. During this campaign, I will not make false promises. I will not promise you something that I cannot say for sure that I can produce. I can only promise you that I'll try to represent everybody equally and fairly. I absolutely will not engage in any negative campaigns against either of my two opponents. I will not have any part in ads or anything that looks to embarrass or humiliate either of my opponents and bring embarrassment to their families. I'll have no part of that. We need to run on the issues. If you have a record, you need to run on your record. If you don't think you can run on your record, then you probably shouldn't be running. But I believe that we can all three be respectful and courteous because I think the public in general is sick and tired of negative ads that always only give you one-liners and never tell you the whole truth. So I'm pledging now that I will not run that kind of campaign. If there was ever a year that you have a choice between voting for the two big parties, the Democratic Party or the Republican Party, this is the year you need to have that choice. I am an independent. I have always been an independent. I have never pledged my allegiance to either of the major parties because I agree with a lot of issues on the Democratic side and I agree with a lot of issues on the Republican side. I have always voted for the person, not the party. I have voted both parties many times over the years. That, that I think, will make me qualified to go to Richmond and I can work with both sides of the aisle to try to make some changes that we need to make. And I'm looking forward to working on both sides of the aisle and see if we can all come together for the betterment of all the citizens in the 14th district because that's what we need to do. I choose to run because I believe in our community. All of all, every area I represent, especially this little area right here, <laughs> this is home. I grew up down here and I'm very thrilled to be here today looking around at neighbors and friends that I've known all my life and that makes me happy to be here. I want to also try to do some things for some small businesses. There's regulations and red tape in Richmond that's really hindering small business. While I was out knocking on doors, I run up on a local small business here in this little community, uh, a little family-run business, Trimpy's Auto Sales. And she was telling me about the red tape and the time that they have to go through to try to get anything done. They're looking at a six-week turnaround from the time they buy a car before they can sell it. There's no need for that. So I'd like to address some of the issues with the DMV process and see if we can't, you know, we need to look after small car business, not just big car business. You know, the small business is what made this country and that's what will continue to make this country strong, is small business. I will never refer to myself as an elected official. It is an elected representative. Anybody that calls themselves an elected official probably has an ego problem because you are a representative. You are not an official. I thank everybody for coming out today, and I look forward to meeting a lot of you because I'm going to be on the ground doing a massive ground game here. I'm going to try to visit as many of you as I can. I've already been to probably over 100 homes in the 14th district, and I've been well received. I've sat down and talked with people, and I've enjoyed meeting everyone I've enjoyed. So that concludes my announcement, and I am available for questions from the press if you like. Most people see you as a conservative, and obviously Danny Marshall's a conservative. Um, don't you think you'll get some backlash from conservatives? That's entirely possible, you know, but uh, a lot of our conservatives in Richmond, and there's a difference in being a Republican and being a conservative. There's a difference there. But a lot of our Republican base, if you notice, I read in the paper this morning, two of the long-term Republican House members lost their primaries last night. And a lot of that was because of their support of the transportation bill, which is also known as the largest tax increase in the history of the state of Virginia. Did, did Mr. Marshall, was he for that? Yes, he voted for that.
obviously you have a beef, but you don't think he's doing his job right. I've had a lot of conversations, not only with Danny, but with other representatives that represent us in uh, Richmond the last couple of years. That includes uh, Delicate Merrick's uh, Senator Stanley. I have voiced my disapproval at the education bills they passed and supported. I mean, I have been very vocal about it. I have fought this Appalachian change in the law for six years now. I have probably put more time and effort into trying to undo that than any elected official you've got down there now or ever will have. And that's because I care about this community. What do you think, Danny? What's the worst thing you've done? Well, I think the support of the uh, change in regulations on the electric utilities in 2007, that was pretty drastic because that affected everybody. Everybody in Appalachian Territory. I mean, that affected every home, every school, every business. I look and I see the county and the school system setting their budget and they've had to allocate hundreds of extra thousands of dollars to pay electric bills. That was a massive one. I have, I have discussed this with him numerous times over the years. I have never been able to get any positive feedback as into doing any changes about it. Now, this past session, they, cha they passed a law that took two of the items out of that bill. But the whole bill should have been repealed, not just two things. And also, when they passed that law, they made a huge statement. I got an email on it from Delicate Poindexter that they were hand carrying this over to Governor McDonald and they had an emergency clause in it that said Appalachian would not have any more rate increases this year. They have two on the table right now. There's hearings in Richmond on August the 21st and August the 28th for increases. So I'm not sure exactly what that bill did away with, but it didn't stop Appalachian from continuing on this year. I have already made plans and signed up to attend those SC meetings, SCC meetings in Richmond on the 21st. Now, obviously, being an independent, when you get there, the Republicans and Democrats are going to be kind of lobbying you to, if you got you got in, they will be lobbying you to be on their side or the other. Which which side do you think you'll caucus with? I will caucus with the Republican side. But I look forward to having many friends on the Democratic side, and I'm sure you'll see me vote with both parties on many issues. Anything else from anybody? How do you plan to fundraise? I mean, is that... I mean, very, very slowly. I mean, <laughs> very slowly. Um, to me, if you've got to have a half a million dollars to win an election, you didn't win it, you bought it. So I do not expect any massive donations from any companies or anything, and I'm quite sure Appalachian won't be sending me anything. <laughs> but, uh, you know, small campaign donations, whatever anybody would like to give, $5, $10, a dollar, you know, whatever you'd like to give. I'm not going to go ahead and beat people to death because they don't have any money. I'm going to do this with people on the ground. We're going to go to a lot of doors. We're going to spend a lot of time in neighborhoods and communities sitting at dinner tables, eating pinto beans and whatever they're serving. I had some good pinto beans on campaign trail the other night. They were good. But you know stamps aren't but, cheap. Yeah. I beg your pardon? Stamps aren't cheap anymore. I mean, in other words, I mean, you, to get a campaign rolling, you've got to have some money in the, the bank. And it'll, it'll grow as we go. It'll grow as we go. But as I said, if that's what it takes to win, then there is a serious problem with our election process. Well, let's get this process started. Oh, thank you. Thank you. How much was the first donation? Okay, I have two. I have another one from a small business owner that came in today. We have $50 and we have five. So we have $55. Yay, <laughs> yay. And thank you, it's greatly appreciated. As are you. There you. Anyone else have any questions or anything? Thank you very much. Thank you. Now that's Mary Martin, a Henry County native, and she is running in the 14th or for the 14th district against incumbent Danny Marshall, a Republican, and 
uh, another opponent in the Democratic Party. That is Dr. Gary Miller. Now, Dr. Gary Miller is well known in Danville in Pennsylvania County. Uh, he's planned to run on the Democratic ticket against Danny Marshall, the incumbent who for many years has represented uh, the 14th as a Republican. Mary Martin, uh, many of you have known, has a history as a school board representative in Henry County. Uh, and is very proactive and has been for many years in uh, fighting against increased utility rates uh, along with uh, local politicians and representatives. Uh, so uh, 